Hey everybody, it's David R. Becker here, and we're back, back from Green Bay, Wisconsin. I just got back yesterday from a workshop up there and also a demonstration. Uh, that was, I think, on Monday morning, or Monday afternoon, <laughs> Monday in the evening. But I'm back, I'm back here to do birch trees, and there are actually plenty of birch trees up there. And so we're doing birch trees today, and for all you newcomers, this is my Thursday paint along. I know there's probably gonna be some new people, because in the last two weeks, or actually in the last week, I've done like, um, I think four demonstrations, um, four paintings in two places. I did for the Illinois Watercolor Society and also for the Wisconsin, Northeast Wisconsin Watercolor Society. We did um, a demonstration and so uh, welcome. And so I got probably getting a bunch of new people here and actually some of the people who have always come back. <laughs> and so I'm back. And so, it, and if you don't know, I always uh, rate a beer. And actually this week we had gotten, I got two from in my workshop to the ladies barbara i see you're here um she gave me one but i'm going to be drinking carols tonight um johnny blood red <laughs> and it's from title town brewery i guess in um in wisconsin somewhere i think probably in green bay and this is supposed to be i think of one of the um green bay packers it was something and i'm <laughs> i'm not sure about the history of this but let's give it a try let's give it a shot and so now i have literally from that i've been in the last three weeks I've been up in Wisconsin. Um, I have about eight beers that I've got to test. So the next eight, the next um, six weeks, we'll be, we'll be testing out um, beers from Wisconsin, Wisconsin breweries. And there's my new phone. Give me, <laughs> um, I also, I, I, my phone's camera broke. And so they just sent me one today. And so cheers, everybody. Cheers, cheers, cheers. It's not a Guinness. This is a Johnny Blood Red Irish style red ale. So let's give it a shot from Minnes or from Wisconsin. <laughs> and thanks, Carol. Carol was the one that had given me this one. And Barbara, I know you gave me one. That's probably going to be next week's. And so here, cheers, everybody. Cheers, cheers, cheers. Oh, very good. That's very good. I would give that a nine. Very good beer. All right. So get on to the um let's get on to the rest of the thing let's see who's here and we got claudia from a, a red from the u.s virgin islands wow but it's nice and warm down there <laughs> and hi from south carolina that's pamela and i met i met her <laughs> i met a lot of people and a lot of people have um who come online um i i met this last weekend because i was, again did two demonstrations for these watercolor societies so welcome 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 to um, the Thursday nights and the Thursday night paint alongs. So let's go. Here's where you get all my information on my website. Anything you want to know about where I'm at or what I'm doing. Next week I'm going to be in Mi Michigan and doing um, a demonstration for Michigan Water Society and also a um, workshop there. So this is where you find out all that stuff. Either at davidartbecker.com or beckerart.net. Let's go to our supplies. Supplies are, of course, my whole buying watercolors. And uh, we have our whole mind brushes, which my name on them. And so you can get those on my website. We're not going to be using any masking fluid, but we are going to be using tape today. And we are using Stonehenge paper. So value study. Let's see our value study. And I just tur turned it black and white, the image. And I'm going to do a few different things that I did differently from this afternoon. Um, I usually paint this twice because I have a class Thursday afternoon in Libertyville every week. And, unless I'm not there, which next week I will not be there. Um, so, um, we will not have, uh, two, but I hopefully we'll do it next Thursday night. We'll still do it, but from my hotel room, probably in, um, Michigan, Ann Arbor, Ann Arbor, Michigan. All right. And so here we go. This is what we're going to be painting. And I didn't, what I didn't do, um, was follow my value study very well this afternoon. And I was so worried about getting things right that I forgot. I was, I was just so excited about putting yellow in there. And so this area that's dark. And the path is dark and I kind of reverse that. And I always tell my students, don't reverse your value study. Know what your value study is and follow it to a T. I didn't draw up a value study, but I, I did pretty much change this black and white or this color into a black and white. And so then I want this area to be dark. So that basically the whole foreground and the foreground bottom of the trees will be um, dark. And actually I'm not gonna make the trees quite this dark. I'm gonna do more of the white birch tree, so it's not, I know these birch trees when they get older, they, they have dark on the bottom of them, um, but I'm gonna bring it down a little bit farther and make them a different kind of birch tree. <laughs> My artistic license, I can do that. And so I'll make this bottom part a little bit lighter and as it goes up to the top of the thing, they'll be darker. 
a uh, little reversal in the values. Um, but other than that, I'm going to try to follow these values, value study by making the whole foreground dark and the background light. Very simple composition. And so let's go over to our tabletop and get started here. So here's what we did this afternoon. And let me tell you what we're going to be changing. The thing I'm going to be changing, for one, is that I don't see much sky. And so I'm going to bring back a lot of the sky, lots and lots of sky, because I want the birch trees to be dark against the dark bluish um, shaded birch trees, where like this one, against the light sky. And then the, all the light back in the background, because see, yeah, this is not even that light. And then as it comes down the birch tree, it'll still be dark and stark, and we'll have this dark background here. And this whole foreground will be dark, like the value study right there. Um, so um, you, you kind of have to follow that. And so this was kind of not, it was me going ahead and just thinking, I know what I'm doing and I can do better than my value study. But no, you can never do better than your value study. You have to follow your value study. And I said that this last, in the last two days in my workshop, and I have to follow that myself. So I'm going to follow it. And so how did I do this with the tape? So with the tape, what I had done, I took um, tape and I ripped it. I ripped the tape and I rip it and then I just put it down. And then I also took a, a knife. Uh, one time I took the, I put the tape down and I cut it with a knife. I cut it real, real lightly, don't cut into the paper, just cut the tape and I just peel it. Because I don't want a straight line, but this is just the regular um, uh, Hobine um, soft tape and it doesn't rip off. But I will also show you a trick that to get this tape off of there without ripping paper is you take a, a hair dryer and just really lightly put it on and close to it and then just pull it off. And it usually does not rip. Um, it, at times it does tends on your paper. Um, if it's really soft paper and it's damp, it's gonna rip, it's gonna rip some of that paper off or some of the paper off from it with the tape. So let's get going here. And I will be using um, probably going my lights. Lights are always first because I do these things in three stages. And so we're gonna do the first stage is always my color in my lights. So you establish your colors and you get your light lights going on in there. So who do we have here today? And I can toast and cheer again, because this is a nine beer. This is a very good beer, so we have to cheer again. <laughs> so we have Lynn, Claudia, Mary Ann, we got Kathy, Linda, Barbara, Pamela, and I said you guys before, Claudia, all the way from the Virgin Islands. How awesome. So cheers, everybody. Cheers, cheers, cheers to a fall scene. And so we're going to get going. And because a lot of times with this, with the color, colors in the a um, fall scene, the sky, if I'm using blue and I add these bright yellow f of things, then what's going to happen is it's going to give me a green in there. I don't want to do that. So I'm going to keep the sky so bright that it's white. I'm just going to keep it white. You can put a light, light blue in there, but you don't have to. I'm not going to. I'm just going to go right away with my bright yellow. And as I told before, when I'm using yellow, I usually put white into it because I find that the yellows sometimes are just way, way, way too bright for me. They're way too vibrant a color. And so I don't want to use it just plain by itself. And I could use the paper too, but it just helps me when I go in with white, clean up a little bit of my palette because it's so clean all the time. And so there we go. We're going to clean it off a little bit and put a little bit of white into my white. And I'm not going to wet the surface first like I normally do because I'm going to want to maybe have some hard edges in there too. And the only reason you wet a surface is because you want soft edges. And I'm not, I don't want all soft edges. I want to do a little bit of hard edges. I'm just going to kind of take this back here like this. And these are the leaves. And I'm also going to put a little bit of, let's say some lavender back here. Like there's something way in a distance that is way back here. It could be a tree and stuff. And again, I'm doing it hard edged, but I'm doing it very light in value. So it tends to look very soft edged. It looks soft edged because there's not much contrast. And that's one way of not having to do a soft edge with wet water, but giving it the less contrast. So it looks soft. I'm just going to go down here and it's like the very background back there. And I'm, I, yes, I'm not following the exact, um, the, the picture exactly the way it is. And I didn't even put the color one up there because I didn't want to um, be influenced by those colors because it's really orange and um, so I don't want to be influenced by those colors. You can be influenced by them if you'd like to, but I will not be. And I would have to turn my phone off. It's a brand new phone and it's updating everything. <laughs> I just, um, my phone broke and it finally sent me one and boy, the, putting it back together is just like an incredibly painful thing to do. 
And so I bought two years ago or three years ago, I bought like the best phone with the best camera and the camera has busted twice already. You know, it's a, a Samsung Ultra S20. And um, yeah, it was, it was supposed to be the best camera, the best on the market, but it broke twice and it just stopped working. And I think it had something to do with some programs I was using or whatever, but they would always send me because I did take insurance on it, on it. And so they sent me a new one. So I guess it was money well spent for the insurance on that phone because I've gotten three. This is the third phone I've gotten with that because each time the camera breaks. And for an artist, I needed that phone just for the camera's sake. I mean, that's all I needed it for. And so I'm going in here now and putting a little bit of water on there and I'm going to be splashing around and doing a bunch of stuff and putting my lights and see that's far distance. That's far distance trees or whatever. And I can even put real far distance um, branches like this or back here too, like way back there. They're almost like yellow and um, ones I didn't even draw in. Okay, now let's have fun with the white wash and um, I'm going to get a light. I want that whole background to be super, super light and super beautiful. I want a beautiful wash. And I talked a lot about that in my classes this last two weeks uh, in my workshops and stuff about how it is that you want to get some really nice values, really nice effects in your washes. How you get those washes is up to you. There's so many different ways of getting beautiful washes. You can spatter. And anytime you spatter, make sure you cover up areas you don't want to spatter on. But I can spatter into the water. I can... And actually, just by spattering up here and thing that could be looking like leaves. So I'm going to do that too. Watch your beer when you're <laughs> spattering so you don't get it in your beer. <laughs> and thank you, by the way, to all those that have, have um, brought me brought me some beers to test on my on my Thursday night demos or paint alongs, I should say. So I didn't want all the dots in there, but I do want some dots and see how nice they get those little things happening. And now as I'm going down, I'm wetting it. I didn't wet the whole thing because again, I wanted some hard edges and and I'm gonna keep things really light, really light this time too, because the other one got a little bit dark this afternoon. And so I'm gonna try to keep things really light up here. And as I get down here, this of course is gonna be dark in my value study. This says this is dark, right? So I will get that dark. And I'll get it in different kind of fashion where I'm going to wet it some areas and don't wet some areas. And here I'm scumbling it a little bit, meaning that I, it's got dry and I'm just kind of taking my brush quickly over it. And so this darks area, this is a little bit darker areas. And I'm going to take a little bit more of the, of the orange and a little bit darker and kind of spatter. Or take another brush and tap it so you don't have to spatter so much. This will look like leaves and it's wet so it will kind of dissipate and that's fine. I can put other leaves in there later. This is all going to blend together. And so I'm making this a little bit open here. So and I, I wanted to go a little bit farther with the, um, or the sky up here. So I'm just going to pull out this yellow just because I, I still want a little bit more sky up there. I said I would do it and I, I keep on forgetting. And so I just pulling that out a little bit. So you just take paper towel and dab it up get back your sky now down here I'm going to still do my lights these are all my lights remember I'm just doing my lights first that's always the first step is do your lights now also if anybody new here please ask questions I look up every once in a while to the chat I look to see who's here and then I also see if you have any questions so Barbara was up in Boulder Junction yesterday and so she also saw some beautiful birch trees all right so as they're changing and probably this week is probably the best week, you know, it's probably peak this week. And I know up in um, Minnesota, up in the, in the um, North Shore, I've gotten pictures back from my friends up there and it is unbelievably beautiful. It's like orange, orange, everything's orange. And I'm going to make the path here and the path is going to be a dark path. In my other painting this afternoon, I made a light and it's, that was wrong because the path in the picture in my value study is dark. So I'm going to make it dark this time. I'm just going to take some um, brown here. Emit as alone brown, some lavenders. I'm just going to go in there and make the path dark. And it's kind of like a path. And you can always put some of this orange into that. And then later on, I'm going to be putting leaves into that too. And you notice that I put the tape down only because I want to protect the white of the, of the um, trees. And uh, you can use masking fluid if you feel like it. Go ahead and use masking fluid. I tend to not like masking fluid. 
because it rips more of the paper and it also I can't get this beautiful edge. I want a kind of a rough edge and that gives me such a hard line edge when I'm using a um, masking fluid. So now let's look, let's see, that um, this is my dark. This will be a light and then this will be dark in here. And I can leave some little white pa patches and I can make it look kind of um, white patchy. And then this area here is also dark, but kind of more um, reddish. So I'm just going to put one here, make this kind of nice and bright red, where the path is also a dark, probably a dark brown, but I'm making it more purplish, the path. And um, brown, I feel, is a cousin of, brown is a cousin of purple, so it's all kind of in the same family there. So um, we're just going to put that in there. And to get a... Um, a brown or a is basically you take complements and mix them together so blue and orange so if I have a blue here or orange here I can put a little look at that I had orange in my brush but blue in it look at brown super brown you don't need to buy browns and earth tones you can make them very simple with orange and this complement and that's a little bit too red I find and so with the red how do you dull down red green <laughs> how about that you know, you just take a little bit of blue and the yellow, and look at there, brown again. A little bit of brown. It's very simple to make brown. Like I said, I rarely, I don't ever buy tubes of brown. It, all you need is orange, yellows, and reds, and then mix your complements of blues, violets, and blues and violets, and so just get more of them. I was taught when I was in school always to, you know, I always bought the browns, you know, the burnt umbers and burnt siennas and all that. I don't ever do it anymore. I don't need to. I can make my best browns. I can mix them. Same thing with my greens. I just have Kronakrum gold and I mix that with blues. I get some great, great looking, great looking greens. And so I'm going to spatter a little bit more here. I'm still going to get a little bit more yellow with white. I'm going to spatter that in the sky, get some more of the more of the leaves. They kind of tend up looking like leaves a little bit, and so that's what I want. I want to kind of look like leaves. So they make little round dots, right? And so now this area is really dark, and so basically right now I have all my lights happening, and they're all working pretty out pretty well. See, I have the path going through here. I have the, um, which is a little bit different in values and in color. I have these warms, and then I have this brown with a little bit more violet in there. So violet and blue is what I want to be using if I'm using yellow and orange. So this path could be blue, blues, and violets. So I'll put a little blue in there too, just to get that little bit of in, in both of this. And then we'll go up these trees with the dark too, once I get the masking fluid off of there. Actually not masking fluid, but tape. And so, um, any questions anybody? How are you doing on the new palette? I'm waiting for... <laughs> Well, I just, um, I've been putting out um, bids for the doing my new palette, and um, one bid came back, but they wanted to make 10,000 of them, and I just can't afford 10,000 palettes. <laughs> and so that's going to have to be, um, I'm going to have to look. I, I, I'm actually going to be doing a Kickstarter anyways, uh, but I can't afford 10,000 of, of the palette, and so I'm going to have to wait and, and get it. I, I got a couple other bids happening out there, and so once I get the right bid, and I get the right amount and the right look and the right thing, then we'll, we'll be having a palette out there for you. For myself, actually, I just want this palette. I don't like these palettes, and so I'm, I'll be having my own new palette. All right, and so there's my brown. Okay, let's, um, let me, um, let me take a sip of beer here first and say cheers. <laughs> cheers, guys. We got Ilse from um, Ontario saying hello. Hey, and I'm going to use a, not a hair dryer, which is, um, I couldn't find mine, but I got a power stripper. Um, but if you set it on low um, and far away, <laughs> you can still use it like a hair dryer. And it's a lot quieter, um, but you just got to watch it. And so I was going to use this to take the tape off, um, but I do have to wait for this to dry a little bit to, so I can take the tape off. And so ask some questions. <laughs> because uh, we're just going to wait here. Let's see. Let's, let's do our trees back here. We have time to do the trees, and then by that time, maybe this will all be dry. Because this is my lights. Basically, I was telling my class now that that what I'm going to do is I'm going to do three layers, or I should do a book on every painting I do has three 
three steps. And the first step is always, and you always hear me on Thursday saying that the first step is my lights and that this establishes my color scheme and my colors. So I already know for sure what my colors are gonna be. Yellow, orange, blue, violet. That's gonna be my color scheme basically. And that doesn't mean it has to be exactly already be bright orange to a bright blue. It just means it's in that field of, you know, orange to blue and violet to yellow. And so we're going to keep it at that. And um, the second step will be my large area darks, darks and mediums. Large, actually, like these trees are large. So um, the large of those darks and the, and the foreground dark, even darker than this, I'll be putting even darker than that because this is my lights, even though this is the light of the dark areas. Like there's gonna be a dark in here. I'll probably do the path again with some of that in there. And I'm probably gonna do a couple of little patches of dark in there too. So they're large darks. And then the final step would be to do the dark details. And that means like the little things like the on the tree and all the markings in the tree and the branches and the leaves, individual things to make it look very tight. And so your painting doesn't actually look good until the third step. So don't always feel like your painting should look good the whole way through. It doesn't. They have to go through the uglies, like my instructor had always told me. So let me see if I can take this tape off because it's that time. I'm just going to peel it off real lightly. And look, no ripping. Let's see, that's nice. So I'm just taking it off. And it is still a little wet right there, but that's okay. It'll just give me a little bit of a watermark, which it won't be, won't be bad. That's one. And this is just, this is um, soft tape, but you can use masking tape and I get hope, I hope I mix a soft tape, which is not as sticky as some of the masking, masking tape. And so that's really nice to use. Use a bit of my knife here so I can start this up. Couldn't, I can't get unstuck here. Oh, there it is. So slowly, and I like to pull it not upwards like this, because then you're pulling up. I like to pull it across it because then it's not ripping as much because it's not pulling things up. It's just going across it. See how I'm not pulling it upwards like this? I'm pulling it away so it's flat. It's flat and so it's just taking it away from another way of not ripping the paper so much. And here's another one. Just pulling off the tape. And now my birch trees are nice and white, like they should be. Birch trees are white underneath. And then I'm gonna be putting these ones up here, those up there, and not these ones. <laughs> I'm just gonna put those um, dark on the top and they're gonna come down to a light, from dark to light. And so the background will be look dark around them and then the tree itself will be dark, probably at the base. All right, so there's all my trees and so we can go right into them. So how do you do your trees? So now we're gonna go into our darks, our darks and mediums, large darks and mediums. That's the second step. We already established my lights and which is the color of my of my painting so i'm going to wet the surface I'm, I'm using a flat brush for all of those that want to know what kind of brush i'm using i like my flat brushes for some reason a lot more i'm not sure why it's not you know it's just something personal probably um i use them the round ones too at times but for some reason i feel like i handle my flat brushes better but again that's just me i don't know how other people like their brushes if they like uh, rounds better for certain things and you know, test your brushes, test what you like better. And don't test them on paintings, test them on a sheet of paper that you're just practicing on. So here what I did is I kind of wet the surface first and then I kind of left the edges alone because I'm going to have the light wrap around it. And so and it's kind of like what's happening because the light's coming from the back and it's almost like silhouette and I'm taking violets and blues. Remember I said I'm going to take violets and blues and I'm just going to put them on both sides and, and then we give a little bit of edge lighting, rim lighting. That way it looks like the sun is shining from the back. And then back over here, I'm gonna make it darker. And so here I'm gonna make, I'm not gonna, I just take water. Now I have a little bit of color in my water. I'm just taking it right down the middle, leaving the sides alone a little bit. Again, I'm just taking it and then where I hit the side, I, it's okay, but I'm trying to stay away from the sides a little bit. And then I'm gonna manipulate the, um, the wash. I'm gonna go in there with my shadow color of the trees and get those shadow colors. A recent artist demoed using painter's tape for trees. Yeah, I, I mean, you can use pretty much any tape, really, if you think about it. Um, any tape will do fine. Um, painter's tape, which is not as sticky, too, is probably better. Anything that's not really, really too sticky. Like, you don't even use Gorilla tape, that stuff that can rip anything or stick or anything. Nothing really super, super um, adhesive, because you don't want to get it off of there. 
Just enough that um, you don't want the water to go underneath there is what you're looking for. And so here, look at how I'm, I don't want a super um, clean line going down. I just want it to be looking because the birch tree is not super clean. It's it's jar, jagged and you know there's all these dark marks in there. And so if you leave a little patches sometimes where it's a little bit more dark in some areas, that's good. That's what you want. You don't want it to be so perfectly. And I'm not even going to put shadows like over across the side of it a little bit. In some parts I even go black. I'll take a little bit of black and I'll I'll start and put a little black here and there, because that that's what the, the trees kind of look like. And I am, like I said, I am leaving the edges alone at times, at places. Why? Is because I want them to look like it's wrapped around again. The light wrapping around the tree. So there's two trees. And I'll keep on doing more. It's all I'll have to do. Down here, I'm gonna, let's go into a really nice dark. I'm taking black and putting it into my palette here. I'm just going to make this the bottom part really dark going into the ground. Because you see in the, in the pit image there of the actual trees, they do actually, after a time, certain um, birch trees get bark on the bottom. And so I'm just making that dark, leading right into the tree, going right in from above, from below, I mean, up into the tree. Make this a little bit darker. And I always, this is still wet, so it's floating. It's still floating pigment. We still want to do that. Now I'm taking and wetting this one. So there's three of them. You notice that I only did three trees that were... Um, I didn't do just two because you never want to do uh, even. You always want to do odd, odd, odd numbers on everything, and different sizes. You know, different some thicker, some thinner. Here again, I'll start out with maybe a bluish violet, take a little bit of lavender, a little bit of ultramarine blue. I'll make this part a little bit darker up here because it's against the sky, so it can be darker. And as it goes down here, I can make it lighter against where it's going to be lighter. The tree itself, it's going to be lighter. Or the background then you know will be dark and this the tree will be lighter and again going in with some black and maybe do that and i didn't wet that one yet so to stay away from that one i can make either side the darker part because i can make it look like the sun's coming from this way just directly that way and again dark on the bottom and maybe dark into the ground i'll wet this one now see i take the side of the brush because i don't want to if it's if you take it like this it'll be too thick right and so I, I twist it like this and push down for pressure which was what my my um newsletter was about this week pressure on your brushes how do you how can you make a line a certain thickness look at i take and pressurize this side of the brush makes it wide enough and then i can use it and then i pull up the brush for less pressure to make a thinner line so learn how to use your brushes learn how to put pressure on the brush I saw that on, uh, on eBay, uh, not eBay, <laughs> and Facebook, uh, a lady doing that. And I thought, oh boy, I've never done anything about that. I've never told you guys about pressure of your brush. And so that's why this week's newsletter was about that. Learn to put pressure on your brush to get the right pressure, to get the right, the right dimension of the line that you may be doing on your brush. So already, doesn't it look like the sun is hitting way, it's just burning down this way. You know, it's just that bright. Now these trees back here will be not as contrasty because you want them to stay back. So I will make them the color, even though they're probably brown or um, the same color as, as these trees, but because they're way back there, arrow perspective will kind of make them a little bit more orangey yellow because they're back there with all the orange yellow area. You know, that's what everything is. So if I make them the color, same color, it will state right away in, the, in our minds that this is back there and not way up in front. So even though the picture shows all the paintings, look at all, look at up here at this black and white. All those trees back there are just as dark as the ones in the foreground. You are the artist, you make it look like it's farther back. You know, even though it, this one is the same distance as that one, but I wanna make it look like it's farther back than that. So I'm gonna make it less contrasty and make it the color of what's back there. Doesn't matter that it's a dark, same dark tree. It will look like that only because the shape of the tree is a tree. You know, I mean, we know what the shape of the tree looks like and um, our, our minds know that. And so we know it's the same tree. And it's all the outer edge of things anyways that determine what this tree looks like. It's the outer edge. And, it's the, and these kind of trees are very gnarly. They have a lot of, you know, jagged edges on them. So we're going to just do that by going down and 
up and down my brush here a little bit and see how not straight that branch is or the, and see how it darker it's getting darker so it comes a little bit farther forward and so I can do a couple more I can do maybe I'll do one here or maybe this is just a branch off that tree and I'm gonna get darker as I come forward and then you can also do a couple that maybe are a little bit darker right there because these again are I can be a little bit darker and then I'm gonna make these two really dark I'm gonna make those a little bit darker. I do want a couple of them that to be a little bit darker. So let's see, I put two over here. I think this one's one. So I'm just gonna make that one darker. And I'm gonna put some lavender in there and I still make it look like it, um, I'm still gonna try to do the same thing where, where the edges are a little bit lighter. They're not gonna be white like this one, but they will be lighter. And then in the center, will I hope that you will get something dark in there. Uh, maybe put some black in there and just make it nice and dark. And again, I do want to do that to here too, because I, I still want to make this a birch tree. And that just got kind of light. And so I'm going to go back in there and get those little things too. The little parts like this tree, I'm going to get those in there too. But I'll get them hard edged and I'll get them in later. But right now, I just want to make this dark, because in my value study, this area right here between the trees is dark. And you can make it also look like something. And it could be, you know, um, weeds or bushes or underneath um the leaves so it's in the distance in the back and here i can line it on the sides to make it look like it's lit up around by just not going all the way to the edge and you do the same thing for this tree so i'll start this tree out over here and go this way hey mora no no problem being late you can always, you can come the next day even a recent artist okay we got that I'll do a branch coming in this way or, or, or a trunk that's cause not all of them are straight up and down. There's a couple that maybe, you know, tilted a little bit. And then we'll make this dark here. So go out there and check out all these trees right now. I mean, they're all beautiful up in Wisconsin and even down here in Illinois. I think pretty soon they'll get they'll get much better in about a week or two. They're, they're starting to change here, too. Let me bring this down here. And I want to make this, if you look at the picture, this is pretty dark in the back there. So I'm going to make it a pretty dark, like a beautiful, nice, colorful dark in here. I'll um, tap a little bit away to make it look like it's maybe leaves also, or, you know, just kind of making it look pretty, you know, and a nice wash. Because that's what we're doing. We're just artists that make nice washes. We try to make beautiful, beautiful washes in watercolor. That's what watercolor is. It's these fresh washes that are just have beautiful color in them. Or the right value. Don't forget the right value. And I'm going to put this tree going behind this one. Branch. And now we have our big darks, I think, almost all done. Our big darks. Remember I said the second washes. And let's get a little bit more of the dark in the, in the foreground here. Let me get these tree trunks in here coming down. And then this is going to be a uh, light coming streaming through there. And then we're going to bring some dark through here. And I will, I'm going to be doing some opaque, some opaque washes. And I want them to be really thick and I'm going to make them look like leaves are on the ground. Because that's what's happening when in the fall there's tons of leaves on the ground. Especially in this picture, there are lots of leaves on the ground. And so I'm going to take a brown again and make some blue in that brown. And just make it a nice gray to get this part really dark. And what is this? Is this either weeds or is this part of the edge that has, you know, is this gravel? What kind of street is this um, or path is this? And it's probably just not just dirt, basically. And so I'm going to put some leaves on there later. I'm going to keep this um, not too, you know, hard edge back there because, again, I don't want contrast back there because then it'll come forward. I'm going to keep the contrast right here where I want it to come forward. You, you're creating dimension in your work. And you have to keep that dimension going. So I think this is all my darks now. All my large darks and medium tones. Maybe I'll even put a little trail through here. A little line going through. Let's see a little bit dark here. Tennessee is starting to change to fall colors. Oh, now in Tennessee already too? Oh, that's good. It's so very strange how, um, like up north, and because um, they're usually late with uh, their stuff growing up in in the North Shore of Minnesota, but for some reason, 
Um, they have got colors last weekend. Their colors were unbelievable. They were like this orange. The whole lot of trees on the mountainsides. Just amazing. All right, then. So the only left thing left I want to do for the background or for the foreground here, large areas, will be some leaves. Like um, some dark, darker leaves. And they're going to be in this area. And they're going to be kind of together. Again, going around some of these trees going over some of these trees and these are just going to be leaves that are dark and I will put on top of those leaves I will be putting um, bright yellow white opaque um, leaves and so I'm giving myself some dark so I can put those on there later otherwise I won't be able to, there's no place to put that so I'm just kind of going in here and you can use all different kind of ways of making leaves you can tap you can use an ugly brush which is a rubber band brush you can put on there um, a bristle brush you can use which is more of a, you know, it's like kind of a really loose bristle brush that you just kind of tap down in. And there's so many different ways of getting texture. I'm just going to go like this. I'm just tapping down with my brush and just twisting as I tap, getting some of these leaves, making it more. And I wish I could have got more of this happening right in the first wash that I did. Because a lot of times if you can get a really good wash in the very first time where you don't have to do this later on, that's better. If you can get this texture in the first wash, it's always best to get things in the first wash as much as you can. It's wonderful because that makes it look so much more fresh. It's when you start going into second, third, and fourth washes that um, you start losing the freshness of your paint, the paint quality. So I would suggest if you can get it the first wash, everything you can get, get try it. Try doing it as much as you can in the first wash. And so even these branches I'm putting in, I'm going to do those really quickly. And then I'm going to make the dark ones because these... Are the lighter of the of the branches, and I'm gonna go in with the really super dark ones because birch tree branches are really dark; they're almost black. And so I'm gonna do that when I when I get into this next the next step. Here I'm putting just all kinds of branches in there, and you can see right now too, it's not so um, leaf like. There's not many single leaves that you find, and you're gonna find a lot of the single leaves in, in a birch tree. You're gonna see them just glowing. These little little single leaves that are just hanging there. So now we're into our dark details. So now we go into our, my rigger brush or my round brush, and I'm gonna get these really dark, dark branches. I'm actually gonna be using black. I'm just gonna be using black, maybe with a little violet in there. Let me put a little violet in my black. And then I'm just gonna go in the tree and then just bring it into the tree and then just make it look like it's dark right there. Because what happens is these little dark parts of a birch tree, there's like a little triangle and then that's where the branch comes out of it kind of comes out of there so just study if you want to study like um, birch trees get out there and look at them and sketch them see what actually happens when um what the what what's dark what's light how does the tree branch go because some tree branches are they more gnarly do they go straight up or they go to the side do they are they like an oak tree where they're really thick all the way up or you know I think they're more whimsical. They're like thinner and they just, they reach out far. And so um, when you do this, see, I'm going to go far with these branches. I'm not going to just do little short, little stumpy branches because that's not what they are. That's not what they look like. Study the trees that you're doing. Study them and figure them out. Now up here, I'm going to do some darks on there again because they have all these little marks. Birch trees have all these little marks and such. Little things that it's one time there's probably a branch growing out of there. And then I'm going to be putting leaves on those branches. And so also I always remember to overlap some and that overlap some of these trees too. Like they're in front, this tree's in front. So you would overlap this part and make it a little thicker and really dark at the base right here. Have it come out. It's almost like anatomy uh, for um, a body, you know, the limb coming out of a, of an, of a body, you know, it's like that. This is, um, this is the arm coming out of the tree. It's a branch, but it's like an arm. So you have to know how it is. How does it come out of the tree? You know, what happens when it comes out? Does it get thinner and thinner? And So there's anatomy to a tree as there is on a body. And so if you're going to do even a lot of birch trees, get out there and study them and figure out how to do them. And just don't take my word for it. You go out there and look. Look and look and look. And then memorize it. Memorize what you're what you're seeing. Memorize the look of it. And I was telling my class that that's all. That's how I became an illustrator. 
is I had to learn how to draw anything and everything that the art director had thrown my way. And if they wanted to have me draw a lady cooking something, I had to know how to draw a lady cooking something. It's just the way it was. And so I would study it. And, and so now I'm going to be on here. And when I'm out there now and I'm looking at things, I really do memorize a lot of things. I try to memorize it. And I, especially if I know I'm going to have to draw it or paint it, I try to memorize this thing. What is it that about this, this object that if I paint it, what do I have to do to simply make it look the easiest way to make it look like whatever it is that you're painting or drawing? Because it's pretty much drawing what you're doing. And the bottom of these trees are always a little bit dark. Put a little bit of a little bit of um, a bark on the bottom, and then there's little lines, and the lines are usually because it got peeled away. Some of the paper kind of look of the of the tree got pulled away, and then also make sure you don't do it all gray. Make some color in here too. I put a little violet back in there, and then um, maybe put a little little um, twigs going up this way and a lot of, I'm studying all this so I'm doing this all so that later on I can put all these little dots in there because I am going to basically throw a bunch of leaves on the floor <laughs> basically is what's going to happen here and so little little yellow branches back there hey Maria hey Barbara Hey Barbie, hey Linda, everybody's coming in late, but don't worry about coming in late. This is, like I said, it's always here. It's always here. You don't have to, you can come back and you're not going to see it live, but it's always here for you to take. And I'm, um, people are asking me why I'm still doing it after, you know, I, I started it during COVID and um, I truly enjoy it. And I, I like seeing you guys get better. And so I love seeing what you do with the, um, with the paintings too. So please post them after, after you're done with them and let us see them. Even if it's bad, if you think it, it didn't work out, we'd, we'd love to help you. We'd love to tell you and show you. Maybe I can give you some suggestions for the next time you do something. Or maybe, um, yeah, so don't feel bad that you didn't maybe get it right the first time or something. Hey, so most of my paintings the first time when I'm in class don't work out. <laughs> and so I do it the second time and I know they're going to work out because it's my second time at it. And then we, actually we discuss it too before I, when I get out of class, I discuss what I did wrong and that, and that, painting and then I'm going to fix it on this um, when I do my Thursday night paint alongs because they're like they're the guinea pigs and we go in there and I and I try to figure it out and because these I never paint this ever these images I never painted before so it's just I'm pretty much flying by the seat of my you know pants and we're just going and I'm going to try it and um, this week it was just um, birch trees and next week it could be whatever you know we never know what's going to be happening and I never know what we're going to be painting not until about Monday night when Tuesday goes out. That's what I know. Though I did know I want to do birch trees because this was something I did in uh, my class up in um, up at Dillman's. And so it really turned out really well. I loved how everybody did the uh, birch trees. And so um, I'll be doing that in a few of my a few of my classes coming up now. And this part is still wet, so I'm getting soft edges on my leaves or my branches here. So not as good a nice a look, but I'm going to be covering a lot. Like I said, like I'm covering a lot of this up. Now this red over here is nowhere else. So I've got to get some of that really bright, bright reddish orange over on this side, just so that we have a little bit of that on this side. And anytime you do something on one side of the tree, make sure you do it on the opposite side. It looks so terrible if you only do it on one side. you got to take it on both sides of the tree. And so here too, I'm just going to pick out a little bit on that side. Bring it over this way. And how much time do we have? Oh, we still got 15 minutes. We got plenty of time. So now we got to a point where now we go into our detail, detail, detail. I mean, this was our detail. This is our dark detail stage. And now I noticed that I didn't get quite dark enough over here on on the path, like the path. And it's not like a, it's not a um, river or anything like that. But you kind of handle it the same way where it's a little bit different. And right on the edge, I usually make it a little bit darker. You know, just so that, because usually that's what happens because everything gets to the, gets ground up on the on the path itself and then um right where the path starts or where it ends there's always a little bit darkness right there all right so now i'm going to show you so we took the tape off and so that's all you know the trees got to be dark on the top and 
and right here in this area where it's dark, you're gonna make that light, because basically the outer edge is light, and so that all worked really nicely. I do need to maybe do a couple of dark trees through here. I notice that it's like, let's get another dark one in here. And I can change the light. I can make this light down here. I can just bring it light opposite. Now this is very, that's kind of opaque and I'm um, right there, but that's okay. You know, I don't mind having opaque colors in my, in my watercolors. So let's see if I want a couple branches that are white. Is that a problem for you? Um, then don't do it, but it is not for me anymore. I, I, I gladly use white on my paintings and black and um, it's just whatever it makes it look best is what I say. And so now I'm going to go in and do my light tree um, leaves. And so I'm going to go in with white and yellow using um, a little bit more white than yellow and maybe a little bit of orange. I'm making them really light and thick and this is going to be opaque colors, uh, opaque blotches that I put in here, uh, opaque leaves. And so I'm going to just be putting them right over the white and I'm just dotting it and basically kind of grouping them together a little bit here and there but I love to go over the tree a little bit here it gives it the look of the leaves being in front and so now's a good time to put my glasses too so I can see what I'm doing <laughs> oh look at there <laughs> a nice painting so there we put little dots I put some dots over the the leaves themselves or the branch or the trunks of the trees a few of them and I'm doing it very thick and then also, you know, around the branches here and there. You don't have to connect leaves directly to a branch though. I see a lot of people that feel that they always need to put it right by the branch, like right next to the branch. No, they, they have such fine little branches away from that, that you can just put them in um, like over here. They, there's no branch right there, but it's behind it. And it's like, it just looks nice to have a branch really close, close by it because the branch that's holding the leaf is very small and it's like un invisible to the human eye from that distance. And so and how about down here, we'll even put some, like some kind of bush of some type that's maybe a light, a light color. And um, cause there's a lot of leaves all around the forest. I mean, it's not only up high, they're also down here. There may be a little tree that's just starting to grow. And I'm just putting little dots and see how they're they're very light dots and um, they're opaque. They You could not enter this into a, a transparent watercolor society because that is opaque. That is using thick paint and putting it on like gouache. It's not gouache, but gouache is opaque watercolor. So I guess it is gouache, but not physically, like not the materials they put into gouache. It's watercolor used thickly, basically. basically. So, because people always ask me, well, is it gouache then? Well, yeah, the technique is because you're doing opaque watercolor and that's what gouache is. Gouache is opaque watercolor, but not the kind you buy because it has a little bit different um, additives in it than watercolor does, like transparent watercolor. So yes, it is um, opaque watercolor, but not the stuff that you buy because I'm making it really thick by adding watercolor white to it and that makes it very thick. So see, I'm just putting little leaves in there. And it's one thing I need about, if you ever go out there, you kind of see all the individual leaves. They're just blowing in the wind. And it's just so cool to see, um, you know, the, the leaves, they sparkle. The birch tree leaves sparkle and aspen trees too. Aspen trees and birch trees are all, this, they look very much similar. They really look very similar. Similar? <laughs> similar. Simulator, no. So um, I was up in Pine Top, Arizona at one year uh, with a bunch of artists and we painted all the aspens when they turned yellow and boy, were they nice too. So aspens and birch trees, all beautiful, all nice and yellow leaves, bright, shiny. Now I'm gonna put them in the, on the ground. And when I put them on the ground, I lay them flat. And how do I do that? I don't draw them up and down like this. I go like this horizontally. I just do little dashes and they're going to be laying there in the light and there'll be some that are going to be laying. I kind of bunch them up. If for some reason, leaves tend to bunch up in areas because the wind is blowing them and then there's something in the, in the ground that's stopping them or along the ground that's stopping them. So they'll pile up in a certain areas. And so, um, that's how come they're like left in little left in little patches. They're usually like little patches of leaves and, and they're not just one, 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 one all over the place. They're just, 
little round, little little football circle type of things. Horizontal. See, I'm just putting them in horizontally. Putting in the light. Any questions? Oh yeah, Tina. Um, she says she, I reminded her. There is a way of doing birch trees with um, like a credit card or a or a, um, a thing like this, a, a, a palette knife. <laughs> so this is a palette knife. I better have another drink here, guys. <laughs> cheers, everybody. Cheers. I still have ten minutes. So we're almost done. So um, I'm going to show you this little trick. And so when you're doing a birch tree, what you can do is you can, um, like I'll do it in the back here. And so you, you take, you take your spatula <laughs> or your, your pellet knife <laughs> and you rub it into the pellet and then you can make a line first off, you know, you make little lines and then you can take and take like black here and I'm, I'm just rubbing it. And this you can do with a credit card or a bank card or whatever those cards room, hotel room and see, I'm just hitting it across there. I'm just taking it across and doesn't that look like a birch tree? But first I would do the, um, first I would do the light wash, right? Of the purple, do that first. And then you can just take it down and you can make a line. You can just take a line like this. And so there you have an instant birch tree, right? But again, first you would normally, you would want to have the, the light wash in there. You let that dry. So you'd have this, this would be the, excuse me, the wash you'd have in there. And then, it, you know, the same thing. So this would be like this. I let that dry and then I do the scraping but not into a wet wash because it's going to make everything soft edged. But maybe that's what you want to see that just like that. And so there you have a birch tree too. Another little technique um, to making birch trees. I tend to like to just paint and draw more than I do like the little tricky things, but it's fun. Hey, do whatever you want. And so um, a liner brush like this is really nice too for these leaves. I can do, they call them riggers or liner brushes and make some orange ones that are orange, very thick. Again, these are opaque and um, almost used like oil paints or or acrylics. And I'm going in there. And to do this with like masking flu beforehand and putting them on paint would be so hard and so time consuming. And I'm not that kind of person that has that much time to do that. So I go in there and then just take the brush and do like this and do little, little ones, big ones. And do them all over the place and do some dark leaves too how about some red leaves and do a lot and the more you do it, the better i can just do little dark leaves over here too have fun with it you know you're gonna have a lot of fun it's it's just fun doing birch trees and you really can't mess it up because all you have to do is put more leaves and more leaves and more leaves and just follow your value pattern as long as you follow your value pattern you'll do fine always remember that value pattern and then saying that, I probably need to make this a little bit darker down here because isn't that what my pad value pattern was? That the trees, when they come down here, they're dark and this whole area is dark and on top. And so that the background would reflect light, which I didn't do. See, I made this all dark. So it's not as good <laughs> as I thought it would be. But, um, you know, I can make this a little bit darker. Here, let's put a little bit more dark in there because really I, I, I keep on saying that, but I, I stress it so much in my class and sometimes even I don't do it. But... It really is important to keep your value study and keep your value pattern. Keep that pattern going so that the foreground will be my darks and my background will be my lights. Now we still have a beautiful light coming through here, so it's it's fine, but I like to be a teacher that does what I say. <laughs> so um, do, <laughs> do what I say and not what I do sometimes. <laughs> and so here we go. I'll put a little bit more of this in there. I love putting leaves in though. I mean, isn't that fun? Putting leaves in there, dragging all through there. I think that's about it, guys. I think we're five minutes short or six, six minutes um, done early. That's great. It's nice to be done early once in a while. So let me just show you what it looks like without the, without, I did like this area much better than I did this afternoon, but I would have liked to extend that a little bit farther into this area. And I guess you could rub that out and do that, but you get the picture, you get the idea. Always follow your value study. <laughs> so here we go. I'm gonna take this off of here. Any questions, anybody? Thanks for liking the painting. Thanks, everybody. Um, let me let me see yours. You guys are gonna do a great job too. Just please try it. Um, have fun with it, and please show it. We'd love to see it. 
all of us would love to see it. I mean, I've, I've met a lot of people of you out there the last two weeks that who are online, and I just finally met you in, in person. That's always a really lot of fun meeting you in person instead of just being online. But even those of you online, and I have met you, thanks a lot so much for doing this. This is um, I really enjoy this. I love having fun teaching everybody how to paint some really nice paintings. And if you ever have any idea of what you want to learn that I haven't covered, do you think that maybe I should cover something? Please let me know. I, I've done this now for I don't know how many years, and I forget what I've taught you and what I haven't taught you. And sometimes it's best to have you let me know. Let me know what, I, what, you, want to, what you want to learn. Especially since I think I've, uh, I know I've done this, this type of painting before. Um, but there's going to be repeats, and that's fine. I mean, there's always different pictures. All right, and so there we have it, guys. Any last questions? Let me show you this afternoon's and this one. I think this one's turned out a little bit better compositionally because I have a little bit more light going through here. And so I got that, at least I got a little bit of that heading in the background where I did not get as much of the light back there. And so there's not as much dimension or distance in here. Um, this one maybe could use a person right in there. So maybe when I'm done here um, and I finish my beer, I maybe put a people in that one. <laughs> um, you know how I like putting people into things. So, um, so there you have it, guys. And um, I will see you next week from Ann Arbor, Michigan. If you're in the area, please stop by. <laughs> um, we are I'm there. On, I'm doing a demonstration for them on the weekend of not this following week. No, it's coming up weekend, but the following weekend. Um, whatever date that is. I think it's the 15th or something like that. Let me just check my calendar. That would be the 15th. Yeah. On the 15th, I will be up in Ann Arbor or somewhere else that the Michigan Water Society is going to be doing a demonstration for. They have a meeting and I did, I'm going to probably be doing two demonstrations like I've done the last two times. I've done two demonstrations, one on black paper, one on white paper. And um, join me again. All right. So until next week, guys, we'll see you then. Bye-bye.